morning, everyone. This is Julie McDonald with Microcom Technologies, and I would like to thank all of you for attending today's webinar with SureCall. Today's host is Adam Dutcher. He is their technical sales manager, and he will be presenting today. If anyone has any questions, please submit them in the question box, and Adam will answer them at the end of today's presentation. Adam, thank you so much for being with us today. We really appreciate your time and the uh, presentation you have in store for us right now. I am finished for now, so please go ahead and take it on over. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited to get a chance to share about SureCall, uh, not just as a company, but also uh, our products and how they could possibly help in some of these areas uh, that you may see a need when it comes to cellular enhancement. So uh, let's go ahead and talk real quickly about the agenda for today. We're going to talk briefly about who SureCall is as a company. We're also going to talk about what causes a weak cellular signal. Uh, you know, in my neck of the woods, if, if you don't know uh, what is causing the problem, you can't possibly find a solution for it. So we're going to talk about what causes that weak cellular signal for your customers and for yourself uh, and how we can kind of get around that. We're going to be looking at some products today, uh, mainly focusing on the consumer solutions. And then finally, we'll talk about uh, tech support and we'll also feature a digital asset library uh, toward the end of the presentation. So who is SureCall as a company? Uh, well, we have been around since 2001. Uh, our CEO is also our lead engineer as well as the founder of the company. So we're not owned by a third party business. Uh, we do still have a lot of those uh, small business uh, practices where we uh, make sure that we actually answer the phone when you call. We make sure that we uh, handle tech support in house as well. Um, you know, we have had more of a focus, uh, especially at the beginning of the company, uh, on the enterprise market, doing uh, some of the larger um, uh, uh, in building solutions, uh, things up to 250,000 square feet. Uh, but we've also seen a lot of success in the smaller sector uh, in the consumer market. Um, we have multiple patents, lots of different awards, uh, including uh, the Inc. 5000. Uh, you know, some of America's fastest growing uh, private companies. We've uh, had that since uh, I think it's 2000. I think we have one from 2016 all the way till uh, 2019. Um, so, you know, we're, we're an award winning company. Uh, we're a company that that uh, is able to kind of handle inquiries as they come in, uh, be able to give you that personal uh, kind of uh, uh, attention, uh, but also, uh, you know, we've got, uh, we're, we're innovative when it comes to this particular sector, which is in building uh, cellular enhancement. So as we're talking about cellular enhancement, what is, what is causing this problem? I, I'm sure that many of you uh, have had an issue with dropping calls, um, you know, whether it be uh, on the road, in your home, in the office, uh, you know, while at the at the doctor's office, that kind of stuff. Um, but it, it, it does tend to happen to, you know, all of us. Uh, and in fact, um, poor cellular reception is one of the main reasons that people switch carriers in the first place. Uh, and so what is what is causing this issue and how can we possibly work around it so you don't have to have a customer that is going through the process of getting a new carrier. So the first thing we're going to talk about is building materials. Um, the cellular frequencies travel over what are called uh, radio waves, and these waves are very much like sound waves. Um, they're very much like actual physical waves that you would find at a beach. And as these waves travel through the air, uh, when they come in contact with something, they have to react, right? Uh, if they come in contact with something that's very dense, uh, they will either get absorbed by that material, uh, material or possibly bounce off. Um, when they are, maybe it's not as dense of a material, something like a drywall or wood, something that's porous, um, then <clears throat> the cellular signal can kind of pass through that, uh, but it, it, it might be diminished a little bit, right? Uh, you start with 10 soldiers on one side, and then by the time you get through that, you've only got two or three left. Um, and so that's one of the, the big problems with getting frequencies inside of buildings. A lot of these buildings nowadays are built out of concrete or e-glass, which is great at keeping you know, the, uh, the, the temperature inside the building nice and regulated, but it's also fantastic at keeping cellular frequencies out. We also have the terrain to deal with. If you're in an area that's got a lot of foliage, a lot of trees, um, it's possible that 
you know, those branches, the leaves, uh, they may have an effect on cellular frequencies as well. Uh, this is uh, especially apparent in more rural areas where you've got a lot of trees, possibly mountains as well. Uh, you're down in a valley where you've got a cell tower up top and that signal is just not getting there. You also have the issue of the distance from the cell tower. <clears throat> as the cellular frequency travels through the air or through space, uh, it starts to lose its energy, much like, you know, much like us, when you walk for a mile, you're tired by the end. So the further that uh, frequency has to travel, uh, the, the less powerful it is, the less energy that it has. So sometimes uh, you can just be too darn far from the cell tower to really be able to see any kind of benefit on your cell phone or your cell signal. Drop calls and poor signal are something everyone experiences sooner or later. And so as we talked about before, where do we experience these drop calls? A lot of them are at home, um, at work, on your commute, cabin in the woods, road trips. And these are all because of those three factors uh, that we had just talked about. So what can we do about this uh, problem? You know, everybody's got it. Uh, what is the solution? Is the solution to try to find a different carrier that actually has good cell phone reception in the area? Uh, the short answer to that is no. Unfortunately, those three factors that we talked about earlier affect all carriers. So we have to be able to find something that kind of um, gets us to work around those challenges. So um, inside of your home or office, uh, this is an interesting market uh, for us. Uh, it's, a, it's a big market for us uh, because there's not really a lot that you can do about the material that the building or the home is made out of. 53%, uh, almost 54% of American households are wireless only homes. So uh, we can safely say that most homes have only cell phones inside of the home. Uh, and if that cell phone signal is an issue, it becomes a big issue. Uh, it's the only way that you can communicate on a uh, uh, via the telephone. Um, the, the vast majority of um, homes that are within that uh, that other percentile uh, will have a combination of uh, of landline and cellular uh, but about seven percent six and a half percent of american households are landline only homes uh, and so there is a big market for a product uh, that can enhance the cellular reception uh, inside of a home so let's talk about this first solution this first solution is called the fusion for home um, it's great for small offices. It's great for residential applications. Uh, with the right type of, um, of circumstances, it can handle anywhere from 2,000 to 4,000 square feet of coverage. Um, once again, materials are going to be an issue in this. If you have a lot of drywall, plaster, stucco inside of a home, it may not be able to pro uh, provide the 4,000 square feet, but it will be able to provide signal in possibly some of the more crucial areas, maybe the living room, uh, the kitchen, where maybe if there's a, a home office, uh, you can actually customize this product to be able to cover those specific areas. Uh, there are a couple of different options for the, the materials that come with this particular system. Uh, we'll talk about how it's set up here in just a second, but over on the right-hand side, we see the signal booster, which is that little uh, the gray thing there. Uh, you've got your Yagi antenna, which is a directional antenna. Uh, it allows you to point at a specific carrier, and in a lot of residential applications, that's going to be the way to go because you don't often find multiple carriers represented inside of a home. They're on a family plan or they're, uh, you know, everybody kind of has the same carrier, if not on a family plan. Um, but that's a really nice way to pinpoint uh, the signal where it's coming from and be able to pull it into the signal booster. So um, the panel antenna that you see there uh, is an option. There's also an option for you to use a dome or a ceiling antenna, uh, which can easily be hidden inside of a linen closet, uh, possibly a walk-in closet, a storage room, something like that, uh, so that you can, it, and it works very much like a wireless access point. Um, this one allows about eight people to be on the phone at the same time. Uh, if there are challenges to that, if they're expected to have more than eight people on the phone at the same time, uh, we can choose a different model. We can always help out with that. Uh, but this is going to handle the vast majority of your small office and residential applications. Um, we do have a lifetime tech support warranty on all of our products. 
Uh, we do have a three-year warranty and 60-day money-back guarantee on this one. Uh, and so if you, uh, if you end up getting this product, doesn't do what it needs to do, uh, we can always go ahead and get that refund for you within that 60 days of purchase. And this is kind of how it works out. Um, if you're not familiar with signal boosters, basically what we're doing is we're creating a secret escape route for the signal to be able to get in and get out of the building, or in, uh, in this case, the home. Um, so here we see an antenna up on the top of the roof. Uh, it, could, it could possibly be under something like an eave. Uh, it could be toward the chimney if they have a chimney. Uh, a lot of people will just kind of put it um, as where the vent is uh, for the, the attic. Um, and they'll just kind of put it right outside there or they'll put, they'll put it in the attic. Uh, we just got to make sure that we get some signal from the outside. The signal booster doesn't generate its own signal, so it's got to have something to start with. So it collects that outside signal, which is being provided by the cell towers, brings it into the booster. That booster is going to turn up the volume a little bit on it so that you can actually see some gain or see some signal inside of the home. Uh, and once it gets into that signal booster, the signal booster cleans up the signal a little bit and sends it on its way into the inside uh, we call them broadcast antennas. Uh, here we see the uh, the panel antenna um, that is uh, mounted to the to the wall there, and that's going to provide signal inside the home. One of the nice things about going with a signal booster solution uh, is that it uses the same signal as what's going on outside. What that means is um, if you're on a phone call outside, maybe an important business call, you're talking to your significant other or to your kids, as you get into the home. Uh, that same signal is going to be now present inside the house. So you're not going to get a dropped call. There are, are solutions out there that plug into your internet. Problem with that is that they do um, take up bandwidth. You, uh, you do also have to have a, a password to be able to log on to that particular um, uh, hotspot. Uh, but it also is a different network. It's a different set of frequencies. So if you're on the phone uh, with an important call outside and go into the house, you will drop that call because there is not a seamless handoff, uh, as with what we see with signal boosters. Uh, another great thing about these signal boosters is that, uh, is that they are carrier neutral. Um, so if your customer or if you um, change carriers for some reason, maybe there's a better deal going with a separate carrier, you don't have to change the booster. Uh, you just may need to reorient that outside antenna to point it toward a different tower, um, but the booster doesn't really care who the carriers are. It just cares about the frequency. Um, and the frequencies are consistent for all of North American um, carriers. So the Fusion for Home does come in a nice convenient package like this. Um, all of the components uh, that we saw before are inside of this box, the booster, the inside and outside antennas, uh, as well as uh, the cables that you're going to need to be able to hook everything up. So you don't have to buy a bunch of extra stuff um, uh, in order to be able to get this thing up and running. We do also have um, a little bit more of a, a more sleek designed product called the Flare. Uh, and here we can see it on the right hand side. This one acts a little bit different. It's very similar to the Fusion for Home, um, but it doesn't have quite as much oomph uh, as the Fusion for Home. So this is gonna be more for, uh, you know, maybe one or two rooms in the home. Uh, if, it's a, if it's kind of an open concept, you might be able to get about 2000 square feet out of this product, um, but it, uh, the antenna and the booster are present inside of that little silver obelisk that you see there on the right. Uh, and this is kind of how you would set it up. You've got your outside antenna uh, that is going to collect the signal as we talked about before. And then hopefully you would be able to put this booster somewhere centrally located within the space that you're trying to cover. This one works out really well for home offices. It works out really well for smaller uh, offices maybe that, uh, uh, that share space. Uh, that lease space within a larger building, uh, and that way you can get the coverage that you need uh, without necessarily oversaturating the area uh, with signal. Um, and just like with the Fusion for Home, this one does come in a nice convenient package. Um, now for a lot of you, you may experience um, dropped calls, not necessarily within a building, uh, or within um, a home, you may actually be one of uh, one of these uh, uh, individuals who do a lot of commuting, uh, possibly work from their car or from their truck. And if that's the case, 
uh, then we do have some products available for boosting cellular signal in your vehicle as well. Um, this picture over on the right hand side really is reminiscent for me. Uh, if my 11 year old is not occupied by something for any longer than three minutes, he's going to go crazy. So having cellular enhancement uh, inside of a vehicle is really becoming of paramount importance. Um, there are, uh, you know, uh, your, your regular um, uh, cellular activities that you may need it for, watching your YouTube to entertain your kids, um, possibly conducting business calls, but you also are able, uh, a lot of the a lot of the cars nowadays uh, will boast having uh, LTE inside of the car uh, or what they call Wi-Fi inside the car. Now, to be fair, uh, this Wi-Fi and this, uh, this LTE uh, is utilizing a cellular modem inside of the car. So um, a signal booster like this is going to be able to help with those frequencies as well. Um, we know that a lot of emergency response vehicles need to be uh, connected at all times. Uh, so that's another market. Uh, and we've got a couple of products that are helping within this mobile uh, enhancement, cellular enhancement market. The first one is going to be the Fusion to Go 3.0. Uh, the Fusion to Go 3.0 is uh, one of the best boosters out there, uh, not only for the, the, the price, but also for the performance. Um, this is a booster that primarily focuses on the rural market. Um, it has a very high uplink power. Um, and what that essentially means is there's, there's two different um, there's two different lanes of traffic for cellular enhancement or uh, for, for cellular frequencies. Uh, there is what's called the uplink and there is the downlink. The downlink is what comes from the tower and goes into your phone. And the uplink is what goes from your phone up to the tower. Uh, and so one of the issues that cellular, um, sorry, one of the issues that mobile users have is that they get too far from the tower. If they're driving out in the sticks, uh, maybe they are going on a, a long road trip, uh, maybe in a, a less developed area where there's not a cell tower every five to 10 miles, um, that could be an issue. And so this Fusion to Go 3.0 is going to be uh, fantastic for those particular customers. Um, so the way that this kind of sets up, we see here on the right hand side, uh, the little, um, the, the green uh, antenna there, that is your outside, once again, donor antenna. Uh, so that's gonna collect the signal. You also have the, the booster itself, which is that, that big gray thing with the heat sink uh, fins on it. Uh, and those heat sink fins are just to try to kind of keep everything cool. Uh, as you may know, heat can be the enemy of electronics. So we try to keep these things as cool as possible, especially if it's going to be permanently mounted inside of the vehicle. Um, and then you also see the, the, the it almost looks like a, a Hershey bar there, um, but that is your, um, your patch antenna, uh, and that is going to get connected to the console, uh, possibly to the um, uh, to to where your seatbelt is uh, beer, uh, by your head uh, as well. Um, so let's take a look at how this thing gets set up. So here we can see a vehicle that's got the signal booster just as a diagram uh, installed. We've got your outside antenna. It is a magnetic antenna, so if you have an aluminum um, roof. This may not necessarily be the best option for you. However, there are adhesive options and you can also uh, place a piece of metal between the, the roof and the outside donor antenna uh, and that should be able to allow it to kind of clasp on. Um, and then you've got your inside patch antenna. Like I said, you can put it either, uh, you know, between the, the, uh, the front and the rear windows or you can put it on your console pointed toward the, the the individuals in the front, uh, and then you also have your typical DC power supply. Um, this particular uh, system, the, the Fusion uh, to Go, will be able to enhance signal for a couple of people. Um, you know, we would say probably two, maybe three people inside of the uh, inside of the vehicle at one time. Um, but you know, you may be somebody who um, needs more performance over capacity. So for those particular customers, we do have another option. This is the end range. Uh, this is the boot, uh, this is the signal booster that just won uh, the 2019, uh, sorry, the 2020 CES Innovation Award. Um, it's the booster is actually this fin that we see here toward us. 
Um, that big plate thing that we see behind that, uh, that is going to be where you place your uh, phone. I know that for my phone, I've got a little piece of metal between my case and my phone where I um, you know, magnetically mount it to uh, a mount inside of my car. Uh, and that is essentially what this thing is over here on the right-hand side. And it also acts as an antenna. So one of the, uh, the reasons that this is so innovative is because the booster actually is installed outside the car. Um, and what this does is it allows you to um, get rid of what's called cable loss. Uh, as signal travels through the cable, uh, it actually starts to lose power. Uh, and by putting the signal booster outside and basically having it attached to the donor antenna, we collect the signal at its strongest and send it into the car to really give you that enhanced signal uh, and very easily increase your, uh, your connectivity to ensure that you don't get any drop calls. One of the other nice things about this is there's no booster to install inside of the car. As you can see, there's only two components, uh, the outside antenna and the inside um, uh, magnetic antenna. And then you've got your, once again, AC power supply. Um, and here, once again, we've got this nice little uh, uh, package here for you. Um, very easy, very convenient to pick up, uh, and also super easy to install. I mean, when it comes to uh, you know, working on cars, if there was a green thumb for mechanics, uh, I would not have it. But uh, these are very easy to install. You run the wire down the weather stripping underneath the, uh, the carpets inside of the car, boom, you're done. Uh, and you don't, you know, if you wanted to, you could take it out, put it into a different vehicle. So there's a lot of flexibility when it comes to um, the versatility of these particular mobile products, especially the Fusion to Go 3.0, which works really great. And uh, I think I forgot to mention that it works great in RV applications, uh, but also this end range. Um, for technical support, we do offer in-house technical support. Um, and so we've got um, uh, uh, 800 number there for you. Uh, we're available from seven to five, um, Monday through Friday. That's a, of course, specific standard time. Uh, and our technical support guys are, are, uh, are second to none. Um, they, uh, the boosters themselves, um, when we get them up and running in troubleshot, uh, we've got a less than 1% return rate. Uh, and so they're, they're built well, uh, they're designed well, uh, they're going to last uh, for a very long time, um, and uh, you know we, we do also have the infrastructure to back up that support. Uh, if you wanted to, to you know get any um, of the uh, the data sheets or user manuals, kind of see what these uh, these things look like and that kind of stuff, uh, we do have a digital asset library available, uh, which we see here. Uh, and so we would be uh, happy to, to go ahead and get you any of those data sheets as well. Just give us a call here at the office uh, and we'll shoot you a link to where you can find them. Uh, your direct contact is going to be a gentleman named Jason Hayes. Uh, he is uh, the, the sales uh, guy that's kind of handling um, more of the, uh, the, the consumer uh, side of things. I handle a lot of the, the larger building projects and that kind of stuff. Uh, so if you have any questions about products, uh, you know, any technical questions I can help out with as well, uh, but Jason's going to be a fantastic uh, resource for you, uh, and here is his contact information. I want to say thank you so much, Julie, for having me, giving, giving me the opportunity to uh, blather on about how great the sure call systems are, uh, but I'm going to go ahead and pass it back over to you, and I'd be happy to answer any questions that may be in the queue. Thank you very much, Adam, for that wonderful presentation. We enjoyed it very much. And yes, I do have some questions for you. Let's get started with the first one. Let's see here. How about a boat installation? Will it work on water? That is a fantastic uh, question. The short answer is yes, it will work. Um, the only issue is that you've got to find an outside uh, donor antenna that uh, supports marine applications, uh, something that is weatherproof. Uh, but all of these mobile systems are, um, are convertible uh, to a marine um, application. Um, one of the other nice things about these systems is that as, as you get closer to port, usually that signal is going to get stronger and stronger and stronger. 
some of the older systems or some of the other systems on the market will actually shut down if there's too much signal coming into the booster. Uh, and our systems uh, do not have that issue. Um, and so, you know, you can leave this thing on when you're getting into the port, you're going to have the same amount of coverage as when you get out on the water. Uh, but once again, in a marine application, the distance from the cell tower is going to be a factor. Um, so, you know, as long as you're staying close to shore, um, you're going to be able to see that enhancement as long as you've got that signal to work with to begin with. Excellent. Thank you so much for that, Adam. Next question here for you. As one pinpoints a carrier at the home, does this mean that a guest who comes over with a different carrier service will not share the benefits of the connection? Oh, that's a that's a really great question. Um, so, uh, as we stated before, the boosters don't really care who the carriers are. Um, so, even though you have a uh, an antenna outside pointed to a specific carrier that antenna still picks up frequencies on the sides as well as on the backside. It's just not as strong. So it is possible if there's another tower in the area from a different carrier and you have a guest who has a different carrier, uh, it is possible for them to be able to see the benefits of the sure call system as well without having to log on, without having to do anything to their phone. It's basically whatever's going on outside, that signal booster picks it up and brings it inside. Excellent. Thank you, Adam. And here's another question that's somewhat related to the one you just answered. Um, you had mentioned uh, that they work as carrier neutral. Will it still work internationally? Uh, as long as international signals are, are kind of a are kind of tough. So in North America uh, and in the west side of South America, uh, the signal booster will work. However, if you get into Europe and uh, the east side of South America, uh, they run off of different frequencies. So to kind of give you a quick rundown, uh, cellular frequencies here in the States run off of 1900 and 800 megahertz frequencies, whereas uh, in Europe, they run off of 900 and 1800. So it's it's basically, you know, just like uh, the, the language differences between here and Europe, it's the same thing. The, the frequencies are not the same. So uh, if you're sticking with North America or uh, the west side of South America, it will work. But if you get, uh, you know, uh, Australia, Europe, uh, the, the east side of South America, uh, that's a different language that the booster does not speak. Excellent. Thank you, Adam, for that. Next question here for you. Um, can one use any type of external antennas with your units? Uh, so kind of sticking with the, uh, the, the language analogy, if the uh, antenna that you are installing does speak the same language, absolutely. Uh, but you have to be careful. You got to make sure that you check the frequencies that the booster um, enhances or the, that the booster picks up, which is available on all of our data sheets. And you have to cross-reference that uh, with the actual antenna that you're thinking about installing. Because some of the radio antennas, they may not go all the way up to 2.1 gigahertz like, uh, like the signal booster will. Um, you may have some that are you know, uh, in the 600 uh, megahertz range, and that's not something that we do. So, uh, the satellite antennas um, you know, that are running you know, 14 gigahertz, that's not going to work. Um, fortunately, uh, the booster itself does come with its own antenna, uh, and you can use the already installed um, uh, J-bar if you have one from a previous uh, maybe a previous antenna. Uh, so, you know, you don't have to necessarily use a specific type of J-bar. You can use what you already have. Excellent. Thank you, Adam. Next question here for you. It's kind of a two-part question. Um, does the phone physically have to be on the phone mount antenna? And if so, does this make it a single phone booster? Yeah, the end range is a single user um, signal booster. So it does have to be attached to that magnetic um, uh, antenna that kind of goes on your vent or in your, uh, in your uh, uh, cup holder. Um, but the other one, the Fusion for Home 3.0, it does not have to be attached to that patch antenna. Uh, so the end range, yes, it's singular device. Uh, the Fusion 
to go. Uh, no, it can have multiple users at the same time. Excellent. Thank you, Adam. Can you tell us a little bit about where the SureCall products are manufactured? Certainly. Yeah, so um, the manufacturing, um, we do have some manufacturing that's done here in the States. Um, we do also have uh, a, a factory that's in, uh, in Xinjiang, China. Uh, and, uh, you know, for inventory's sake, sometimes we'll have the, the boosters made there uh, and then shipped over here. Um, you know, but uh, a lot of the manufacturing gets done here uh, in Fremont, California, uh, which is in the San Francisco Bay Area. Excellent, Adam. Thank you so much for answering all of those questions for us this morning. And also, thank you to everyone for attending today's webinar. If anyone has any further questions, of course, please feel free to contact your sales rep or email us at sales at microcomtech.com. And if you wish to view any of the products mentioned or shown here today, please visit us at www.microcom.us. And please remember this webinar presentation has been recorded and will be uploaded to our Microcom YouTube channel so you can view it again. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Adam, for presenting with us this morning. We greatly appreciate it. And until next time, we will definitely have another webinar with SureCall in the future. Have a fantastic day, everybody.